congratulations. You have all chosen to be born at the most important, the most interesting, and the best time in all of human history. So well done. That was a really good decision. The other reason for this exponential growth is, is the exponential growth in the power of our technology. And increasingly, our most powerful technology is artificial intelligence. We know that AI is our most powerful technology because it has thrashed us at a series of competitions which we regard as being very challenging and where we put up the best humans that we had to offer. But it was last year that uh, we really got our comeuppance because an AI system developed in Singapore assembled an IKEA chair in nine minutes. <laughs> and it didn't swear. <laughs> and I think that we can all agree that that's it. That's, that's game over for the humans. <laughs> You've probably heard that the smartphone in your pocket has more compute power than NASA had when they sent Neil Armstrong to the moon. And that is absolutely true, but it's out of date. A toaster, a good toaster, now has more compute power than NASA had when they sent Neil Armstrong to the moon. And to me, that just says how incredibly brave Neil Armstrong and the rest of them were. <laughs> I would not, I don't know about you, but I would not go into space relying on the intelligence of a toaster. Smartphones is where you find most AI at the moment. Search, translate, maps, miracles created by Google and Facebook, and they're all in this. And at the moment, Siri and her friends Alexa and Cortana <coughs> uh, is a bit dumb. Siri's a bit silly. But in the next five, ten years, you are going to have conversations with your smartphone. Siri is going to go from being silly to being smart and indeed to being sexy. And this, of course, is Siri being sexy. <laughs> and because of this exponential growth, because of Moore's law, the machines we have in 10 years' time will be well over 100 times more powerful than the machines we have today. The machines we have in 20 years' time will be 8,000 times more powerful than the machines we have today. And the machines we have in 30 years will be a million times more powerful than the ones we have today. That is why AI is so significant. DeepMind, that SAS of deep learning in North London, they had this two-step mission statement for themselves and for society as a whole. Step one, solve intelligence. Create an artificial general intelligence. Step two, use that to solve everything else. And they really mean everything else. War, poverty. And this is the one that really gets me, death. So I'll leave that one there and go on to the other singularity, which is actually going to happen sooner, and I want to spend a bit more time on this. This is the economic singularity, and it, in a word, it's joblessness through automation. That's three words. If we have a world in which machines do the jobs, we could have a world in which humans do whatever we want to do. We're pampered by the robots, and we become the best artist we can be, the best golfer, the best public speaker, the best writer, the best... Actuary. Um, we do whatever we want to do. We could have a world where more our children and our grandchildren than ourselves, unfortunately, um, do whatever they want to do. We could have a second renaissance. And then we could have a world in which people don't need to die. We could all live in a state of permanent bliss without losing what we think is essential in ourselves. So, if we are conscious, if we go consciously through the information revolution, we can have an incredibly wonderful world. So let's make it so.